and welcome 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 hello 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 hola 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 hello bonjour and now in this part three of my presentation of my 21 days geopolymer experimentation i will explain to you what i have tried and my theory or one of the theory of how they made the beautiful masonry for example at the site of Sacsayhuaman so let's start it's May 2 2022 and there's ma there's many styles of masonry to replicate and i think they each used a unique technique of molding so i will try many theories theory number 1 Sacsayhuaman masonry the unique and giant polygonal stones were prepared on the ground and then placed in the same order vertically using block and tackle pulley system to create the wall structure. So this theory comes from Alex Gonzalez. He is an architect from the United States. He saw I was experimenting, so we start chatting a week ago. Yeah, back then. Having done my school studies in, ar in architecture, we immediately connected. Alex has a lot of experiment experience with concrete, physics, and engineering on the field. So I was so it was a pleasure working with him to make this theory more complete. This is the masonry that I'm trying to replicate in this experimentation. Those stones are gigantic. Like this post here is probably three feet high so you have an idea those are very huge stones now Alex made some uh, sketch to explain to me a little bit better his uh, his theory so he said you dig in the ground then you fill with uh, the geopolymer solution then you insert some metal plates to uh, do the shapes and then um, you you dig a little bit more around you remove the stones and you place them on the wall the same way like the, yeah the exact same way that you made them in the ground and then you just repeat 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 so this was a little experimentation on that theory a little bit later in this presentation i will show you a better experimentation of the same theory because now you can see i'm using cardboard to replicate for the metal sheets that the ancient civilization could have used remember peru is one of the largest producer of copper so they could have made those metal sheets with copper. Now, keep in mind, this is a very small scale. The, the yellow uh, cardboard represent the ground, digging in the ground. Then you have the geopolymer solution that I've poured a little bit before. And then the geopolymer was still uh, malleable. I inserted the cardboard sheets which represent the middle sheets and then you will see all right now it's just a couple minutes after the pouring and it's already very very hard not very very hard but it's hard like you can hear so here i'm just showing how quickly the geopolymer becomes solid So I will remove the mold. <laughs> and now the final touch, I remove everything.
and let me show you the final result. Very interesting first try. So this is the final result. It's done on the ground after removing the molds, after removing the excess. This is what we're left with. Does this look similar to you? To me, it does. I know there, there's tons of imperfection, tons of imperfection, tons of knowledge to be learned and to do better. But just look at the big picture. So you have smooth edge. Okay, we can replicate smooth edge. Smooth edge right here. Smooth edge right here. Smooth edge right here and right here. And look at the back, tons of smooth edge. What I mean by smooth edge is the rocks are do not have like sharp corner. And if they do, I can replicate the sharp corner also. Then you have the beautiful joints that are almost perfect. In, the, in my experimentation, those are perfect. And the bubble effect is recreated also. You cannot see it from that picture, but I'm telling you, because this is very small scale, but when you get closer and closer, because when you insert the metal sheets in the geopolymer that is not fully dry, it will actually bring down the geopolymer inside when you push it with the metal plates. So it creates the little bubble effect on the side like we see here see the bubble effect so the there is like a it's round 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 it's not flat so that was a good experiment but let's continue now theory number two this was my own theory and uh, i thought that the ancient made the rocks directly on the wall free-ended meaning they made a geopolymer recipe and they applied it directly on the wall. They made the stone free-ended, freestyle, kind of. Because one analysis that I've done after visiting the site of saxe man many, 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 many times, because I was living two minutes away, so I went there over 20 times, was that every stones are unique. The facade is definitely not perfect. It's very rough. It's not, it's not perfect. It's not smooth. When you look from the side, when you put your, your, your head on the wall and you look sideways, you see that there is different depth. So the stones are not perfectly uh, flat and they do not have the exact same depth. So to me, it, it didn't look like it was done with some, how can I say? some mold it looked like it was more done artistically so let me show you this experimentation of this theory so the cardboard represent the incline hill of earth so let's say as you can tell in in Sacsayhuaman behind the wall it's not just a, a wall that that hole itself there's actually earth behind so this Cardboard represent the earth. And then I was doing the geopolymer and I was doing the, the stones directly on the wall. Now the recipe is ready. Let's move some more rocks. So you see, <laughs> you see me here using a spoon and my fingers. Think about this. This is tiny scale. So it would actually be easier to do it on a large scale because my tools would be smaller compared to the rock. Now my tools are very large compared to the small rocks that I'm doing. So that's just... Oh, a little ready. explanation. And this is the final result. I actually love it, but I shouldn't be biased. I think this looks very similar.
It can be reproduced on a large scale, but still doesn't explain, explain the knobs. Look how very similar it is. The depth is not the same. The facade is not perfect. Um, it looks like some natural rock. Very similar to the picture on the right. So this is the scale. Now this is a very close up image. And it was before I've worked the details, but the joints are perfect. The facade is not perfect, but that's very similar to the site of Saxe Oman. Now you can see the biggest stone that I've made was 11 centimeters by seven centimeters. So it's not big, I'm on a small scale. Now we're going for the straight rectangle masonry, just May, May 4th, that day I, I decided, okay, I'm going to do this type of masonry. Different molding technique for some concrete for the rest of the day. And then probably tonight I will try another experiment. Because this... So the style, this, the perfect rectangle masonry style was definitely not done um, freestyle, free-handed. So I will research on some and that's the, that was the final result for the straight rectangle. Looks good, but thinking about it again and again, I think if you want to do a wall on a large scale, don't think it, this was the technique they used. So the style... Different. So now we're back to the first theory, which is uh, to do the, the wall on the ground to do the stone on the ground but this time I I did have some metal plates and look how the result is very 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 similar I still need to improve the geopolymer recipe but the the shape is very similar the gaps the joints are perfect just look look at the video hmm yeah, I had it water in the process. That's not good. Still too liquid. Welcome. And then a little bit more. Back, but you get the point. Look how we can split them. And they look like they have big gaps. But when we put them on top of each other, Split. So you see in the second video, I'm explaining that when you do the stone on the, the ground and you insert the metal plates, you remove the metal plates and the gap, the joint seems quite big. But when you remove the stone and you actually make, uh, put them to make the, to do the wall, the it's so heavy those stones are so heavy that suddenly there is no gap in between also because of the density of the materials it it's coming all together so the joints that are a little bit bigger on the ground when you put them on the wall they become a lot smaller let's watch this video one more time right but you get the point look how we can split them and they look like they have big gaps but when we put them on top of each other whoop, split whoop. so you saw it All right, but you get the Let's point continue look. now we're still may 8 here in the middle, you can you can see the metal plates. This is what I was. This those were the metal plates I was using to do the shape. And the ancient civilization could have made those metal plate from copper. So if we do them on the ground, and you see some gaps in between, you think ah, this is not the precision of the ancient civilization. But then when you put them on top of each other like this, the weight. 
ok Oop. I don't know what's happening now. Okay, we have a little technical problem. I don't know why it's doing this. Stay with me, please. What's happening? I want to play this. A beach music. rock would actually push towards the ground because it's okay okay so let's let's cut it here for part three i don't know what's what's happening with the with this uh, google slide i will fix the problem and come back for part four i will continue to explain my experimentation and we will talk about this section right here Thank you for listening. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment below if you have some questions and let's grow together. So this is my presentation of my 21 days experimentation on geopolymer, trying to replicate the masonry of the ancient civilization. Talk to you soon.